started out last week in a, a new series uh, called The Questions of Jesus. The questions that Jesus asked of people. The questions as he walked through the world and as he walked around and, and interacted with the people, interacted with his disciples, interacted with his followers. The questions that he asked them. And we're going to look at some of them through the next few weeks and, and see how these questions that he asked people in that day, how they, how they affect us and how we should be willing to answer these questions and how they how they are actually presented to us as much as they are to those around us or those that in his day we looked last week uh, as he asked the, the the people around him when he was at the at Caesarea Philippi and he asked them who do you say that I am and uh, we saw there when he asked that question where he was at and how, how that Caesarea Philippi relates to our world today and how we are in the same time period. We are in the, nothing has changed since the days of Caesarea Philippi. And how that, that we are asked that same question. Who do we say that Jesus is? But today, as we uh, go forward... forward. I have another question. And this is the question that Jesus asked and he asked of all of what do you want? What do you want? As you go through life, this is a question that we all have to answer. What do you want? Mark chapter 10 is where we'll be this morning. And I want to, as we look at this question, I'm going to, I'm going to show you that this question is asked several times in the Bible. This is not, this is not the only time this question is asked. But in Mark chapter 10, verse 46, it's, we see that it says, Now they came to Jericho. As he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat at the road begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then many warned him to be quiet, but he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Then he called the blind man, saying to him, Be of good cheer, rise, he is calling you. And throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. So Jesus answered and said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Rabboni, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, Go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you this morning that you still ask us, What do you want? And Lord, we just thank you that, that you ask us that question. But Lord, I pray that you would help us all in faith to answer in a way that is pleasing to you. And I pray, Lord, that you will help us today to understand uh, what it means to please you. In your name we pray. Amen. Now this does, this, this seems like a redundant question. I mean, here is a blind man coming to you and asking you to have mercy on him. Why would you think Jesus would, would need to ask this question? This man, I want you to understand something, Bartimaeus, he was a beggar. He sat along the road and he begged for money and he begged for food. Now this was the, in the day long before there was Social Security. This was long before the time that there was, there was disability benefits. This was long before the time of welfare. This was long before any of those times. And, and it was common for people to stay, sit along the road and ask for food or ask for money. We see that today all the time, right? We have people, now, now this is why Jesus asked the question. How many times have you seen somebody holding a sign that says, we'll work for food? Or would, would like a job? 
Have you ever offered one of them a job? You know, people will tell you stuff that they don't really want. We had a, a, a man, and, and I've been at several different churches, and, and over the years we've, we've encountered a lot of different people, a lot of different people coming to ask for things. Had a man one time come to the church, and he said, uh, you know, I, I, me and my wife split up. I got kicked out of the house, and, I, and, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get a job here, and, and I need a place to stay, and I need some money. This hotel says it's this much money a night, and I need some money. And uh, the church I was at at the time had a set of a furnished apartment buildings right across the street. And the man who owned them went to our church. And I didn't think of this quick, very quick, but one of the deacons standing beside me did. I was a deacon at the time, but he said, Hey, you know what? The guy that owns those apartments goes to church here, and there's one empty. We'll get you a place. Well, 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 well no, no, I, I, need, I need to be over here. And finally I looked at him, I said, You told us what your need was. I will meet your need but it won't give you any money. He threw gravel as he left the parking lot. About a year later, the guy, I guess he forgot about the last time, and I recognized him when he walked up, but he came and he was needing to get to Knoxville for a job interview. He didn't have money to get down there. He didn't have money for food, and he didn't have gas to get there. We had a bus at the time, and I said, you know what? I've got an account up here at this store. We'll go up there. We'll fill your car up. We'll get you a loaf of bread. We'll get you a pack of ham. We'll get you some tomatoes. We'll get you some chips. We'll get you some drinks. We'll get you everything you need. Oh, 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 well, I'll need gas to get back. I said, well, you ought to be able to get to Knoxville and back on a tank of gas. Well, I need... I, I need well, we'd paved the parking lot, but this time he squealed his tires this time leaving. <laughs> The thing is, folks, not always is our, our desire the same as what our need is. We, we have needs and we have desires, and they're not always the same. And that's, why, that's one of the reasons that Jesus looked at this man and said, What do you want? Do you want me to just give you some money? Do you want me to just give you some food? Let me tell you something. Jesus, nowhere do I ever see that Jesus just gave handouts. And, and the thing is, is that's what, there are people today, now I'm not saying everybody, but there are people today that are on disability that if you offered to heal them wouldn't take it because they'd have to go back to work. <laughs> now not all of them, I know, I know a lot of people on disability that would, would gladly go back to work if they were able to. But that's the thing. We have these in society. And I think that is part of the reason that Jesus looked at him and said, what do you want? I mean, the, the need was obvious, but what is his desire? Folks, we have all kinds of needs in our lives, but what is our desire? Our desire should be to be closer to Jesus. Our desire should be to please Jesus. Our desire should be to meet those needs of others as well. But Bartimaeus was blind. He was a beggar, but Jesus wanted him to identify not only his need, but to identify his desire. Bartimaeus said, I want to be healed. I want you to give me sight. You see, Bartimaeus, his desire was for his need to be met. We as a society, a lot of times, has, has gone away from that. We have people that, that you know, uh, that, that desire, desire to have a handout, desire to have, and, 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 but we see here another instance where, where Paul, or, uh, Peter and, and John were walking into the temple, and the man was begging. Peter, Peter didn't ask him what do you want. He just, you know what he did? He said, I don't have any money, but I'll heal you. And he said, rise. You see, Jesus wanted him to identify what his desire was. 
So that's one of the reasons as we look and we say, why did Jesus ask him this question? Why did Jesus ask, what is your, what do you want me to do for you? We see that it was, number one, to see if that was really what he wanted. But number two, we have to see, did he really have faith? Did he believe that Jesus could heal him? You know, so many times, we don't really ask for what we need. We don't really ask for what we want. Why? Because we, we don't have the faith to ask for it. We don't have the faith to be specific. You know, there was all kinds of stories going around about Jesus. It, it was, you, you had to be blind. Matter of fact, when, when uh, on the road to Emmaus, when Jesus was walking with the disciples, he said, what's going on? Why are you distraught? And they said, haven't you heard? I mean, it was, it was obvious that everybody had heard of Jesus by this time. If you were in or around Jerusalem or Jericho, people knew who Jesus was. The stories were around and, and there were so many times that people had heard about him. They had heard about him, and they needed healing, but they didn't have the faith to get up and go find him. They didn't, because their, their thought process was this. I've heard that he's healing others. If I get up and expend my energy and go to him and he don't heal me, and he can't heal me, he's not who he says he is, then I've wasted my effort. Every time that people made the effort to come to him, he healed them. The, the, the four men who brought their, their, their friend and let him down through the roof, he said their faith has healed them. We also see the woman with the issue of blood. You know, she had heard about Jesus, but she didn't just sit at home and pray about it. She took her faith and she got up and she went out and found him. And she found where he was going to be. And she, she got through the crowd. She plowed her way through the crowd. Why? Because she had faith that if she could just touch the hem of his garment, that she would be healed. You know, sometimes the thing is we're afraid that if we name, us, if we name something, if we name our desire, if we name it, that, that we'll be disappointed. Jairus was another one. Jairus, his daughter was sick. His daughter was to the point of dying. As a matter of fact, she did die, but he had the faith to come and find Jesus. He knew that if I could just get to him, I could come to him and I could ask him that he has the ability to heal my daughter who is at the, the point of death. And if I could just get to him, I've got the faith if I ask him for what I want. The Roman centurion who, sent for, who came to Jesus and said, my servant is at home dying and you don't even have to come to my house because I have enough faith that if I ask you for what I want, I have enough faith if I name my desire, you can heal him. When he got home, his servant was healed. You see, we see that Jesus had the power, Jesus, but it, listen, it, it took faith to ask for what you wanted. Do you think that this woman who had the issue of blood would have took the effort? I mean, she was weak from this issue of blood. Do you think she would have took the effort to get through the crowd and to get to Jesus if she didn't believe that he could heal her? Or that Jairus would have left his dying daughter to go and find a man if he didn't really believe that he could heal him. Bartimaeus, if he didn't believe that Jesus could have healed him, he would have said, could you just spare a few coins? You see, he believed. He fought through the... Listen, it wasn't easy for him. When he got up and started crying out, people were saying, shh, just be quiet. Don't bother him. But he cried out even the louder. Why? Because he had faith that Jesus could heal him. Jesus expects us to name our desires. He asks us, what do you want from me? He wants us to ask in his name. Let me tell you something. So many times we give a, a shotgun pr prayer. Lord, bless me. Bless our family. Lord, bless our church. Do we ever say, Lord, we need to grow? 
We need to grow so that we can see more people come to know you. Lord, get this. Remove those that hinder you. See, sometimes those, those things in prayer, sometimes those things we ask for are not easy. Not easy to be heard. But sometimes those are the things, Lord, send us those who will work. Remove those who are a hindrance. We have to ask in faith. It's just like when we, when we, um, when we come to him. I think that the Lord wants us to be specific in our prayers. I believe that. I believe it's a show of faith. I believe that he wants us to ask for what our desires. Matter of fact, you know, the, the, um, I think not only for our desires, but I think in our sins. We say, Lord, forgive me of where I failed you. Rather than saying, Lord, I messed up yesterday. Lord, when that person pulled out in front of me, I had evil thoughts toward them. I said something I shouldn't have said. Lord, when that movie came on and that girl had a, was skimply dressed, I had an evil thought. We don't, we don't specify. We just say, Lord, forgive. God expects us to be specific. He wants us. He says, confess your sins. We also see, as Jesus, Jesus told us in the, in the Lord's Prayer, as he, in, in Matthew chapter 6, as he was telling the, the disciples how to pray, he told them, the Father knows what you want before you even ask it. But he went on to say, pray in this way. He told us that the Father knows. But we also see in James, it says, you have not because you ask not. God wants us. He knows what you need. Listen, He knows what you need. He knows what you desire. But He wants us to name it. He wants us to be specific. And that's why He came to Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus, Jesus knew exactly what He needed. He knew exactly what He wanted. But He still asked Him, What is it you want me to do for you? He asked us that same thing. He asked us what it is that we want to be done. In, in John chapter 16, verse 23 through 24, it says, And in that day you will ask me nothing, but assuredly I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be fulfilled. Now this is the time that Jesus is talking to his disciples and he's telling them, I'm going away, I'll come back and I'm going away. There'll be a little while and I'll be gone. There'll be a little while and I'll be back. And then I'm going away, going to the Father. And he tells them in the middle of this that, that you can still ask up to this point, you've not asked of anything of the Father in my name, but you, have, you can ask in my name. Now let's talk about what it means to ask in his name. That don't mean that we say, Lord, in your name, let me win the lottery. In your name, Lord. We have instances in the scriptures of those who ask in his name and those who didn't ask in his name. Asking in his name means asking of something that will glorify him. If it does not glorify him, it is not asking in his name. One instance where we see that God asks, what can I do for you, is in 1 Kings chapter 3. And in 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 5, now this is not Jesus asking, this is God asking. And it says, at Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, ask what I shall give you. 
And Solomon said, You have shown great mercy to your servant David, my father, because he walked before you in truth, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart with, your, with you. You have continued this great kindness for him, and you have given me, him a son to sit on his throne, as it is in this day. Now, O oh Lord my God, you have made your servant king instead of my father David, but I am a little child. I do not know how to how to go out or come in, and your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to be numbered or counted. Therefore, give to your servant an understanding heart to judge your people, that I may discern between good and evil, for who is able to judge this great people of yours? Solomon we know that, that God gave Solomon more wisdom than anybody has ever had. We know that he was the richest, that he was given. I, I don't believe that Bezo or, or, or uh, any of the, the, the richest people of the world today, I don't think they could even compare to Solomon in his day. But Solomon didn't ask for riches. Solomon didn't even ask for wisdom so that he would just be a wise person. Here's what he said. This is something that I loved about Solomon. He said, I want to be able to help your people. The children of Israel are your people, and I am charged with taking care of them, and I can only do it through your wisdom. You see, Solomon wasn't uplifting himself. He wasn't asking for anything for himself. He wasn't asking for wisdom for himself. He was asking for wisdom so that he could better do the job that God had given him to do. In other words, he was asking for it in God's name. He was asking for it if Jesus had been alive in that day. He was asking for it in Jesus' name. In other words, I'm asking for something to glorify you in our lives as we are asked by God, as we are asked by Jesus, what can I do for you? What do you want? Our desire should be to, for things that are uplifting to him. Things that lift him up. Things in our lives. It's not selfish to ask for stuff for ourselves. Bartimaeus was asking for something for himself. I don't know if you understand that or not, but he, was, he wasn't asking to help others. He was asking to help himself. But in doing so, it says that he followed Jesus. And on the way, he glorified God. Everybody that had ever known Bartimaeus from the time that he sat at the road, everybody knew that Bartimaeus was blind. And in doing so, in asking for this, he lifted Jesus up. He glorified the Father. Everything that we ask for, like I said, it's, it's not wrong to ask for things. It's not out, wrong to ask for things for ourselves. That's not selfish. As long as what we're asking for, we're asking for it in the right purpose. We're asking in God's name so that we can glorify God. If our desire is to glorify ourselves, chances are we're not going to get it. We see that in the same chapter that we see Bartimaeus. Mark chapter 10, back in Mark chapter 10, at verse 35, we see, we see Jesus ask somebody else, what do you want? Then James and John, in verse 35, it says, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him saying, Teacher, we want you to do this for us, for whatever we ask. Have you ever had a little kid especially, will you do me a favor, what is it, well, will you do it for me? That's, that's the way I, I see this. I remember, I remember this as a kid. Will you, will you do a favor? Well, what is it? Well, well, will you do a favor before I tell you? That's what they're asking here. Will you do whatever we ask of you, Lord? I see Brandy back there smiling. You've had that question asked, haven't you? <laughs> but Jesus looks at him and he says, What do you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us that we may sit, one on your right hand and the other on your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, 
You do not know what you ask. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? And they said to him, We are able. And Jesus said to them, You will indeed drink the cup that I drink and be baptized or with the baptism that I'm baptized with, will you be baptized? But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, but it is for those for whom it is prepared. Who was James and John wanting to glorify? James and John. You see, James and John, they wanted, they wanted a position of power. They wanted a position of prestige. Now, they had been with Jesus for three years, and they were of his inner circle. You know, we had, we, he had hundreds that followed him. He had his 12 that he called. And then he had his three, his, his close-knit three that were with him, Peter, James, and John. These were his inner circle. These were the ones that were the closest to him. They were the ones that when Jesus went into the garden and went even further, he, these, are the, these are two of the ones that he brought with him. They were his closest. And then they asked for a position of prestige. You see, they thought they had arrived at that. They thought they had gotten to this point. We're, you know, uh, we're, we're above the rest of the twelve. They wanted to glorify themselves. Now, they had no idea what they were asking. They had no idea what was ahead of them. They had no idea. And with what they both faced through life, and the things that they went through, and the things that they went through for Jesus, there is no doubt that in heaven today they are in a place of prestige. But to ask of what they did was selfishness. To ask of what they did were, were only to glorify themselves. And like I said, at that point, Jesus reprimanded them because they didn't know, they didn't understand but what they were asking for was not to glorify Jesus. What they were asking for was not to lift him up. What they were asking for was not in his name. We see that when we ask, when we ask for things, don't just ask, Lord, give us a blessing. Be specific. Be specific in what our desires are. He knows already. He knows what you want. He knows what you, what you desire. He knows what you need. But in faith, in faith, when we, when we specify, when we, when we make it known, you see, when we just say, Lord, bless us, and we make it a blanket or make it a, a shotgun prayer, we, can, we, we don't see the results. We don't see the specificity. Gideon, you know, he, he was very specific. He was very specific about his prayer. I want, I want to know. I want to understand. If, if it's your will, then, then let the ground be dry and the wool be wet. Let the wool be dry and be wet. Specific. And I'm not saying that we need to be putting out fleece. I'm not saying that we... But what I'm saying is, is as we ask for things, if you really have faith that God will do it, if you really are asking in His will... If you are asking for His will to be done, if you are asking for things in His name, then be specific. We're told that throughout Scripture. That's why Jesus said to Bartimaeus, What do you want me to do? And He asked us all that. What do you want? You see, it's, an, it's a question that we have to first answer for ourselves. Because a lot of times, 
like I said, our desires don't always match up with what our needs are. A lot of times we desire things that are outside of our needs, but we also desire things that don't glorify God. So the first thing we need to do is, as Jesus asked Bartimaeus, we need to evaluate ourselves. We need to evaluate our own lives. What, what do I need? What do I desire? A lot of times we don't even know for ourselves. You see, the Holy Spirit, when Solomon was asked by, by God, what do you want? Do you think that Solomon had the wisdom to come up with that answer on his own? I believe the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit in the Old Testament? I didn't think he came till the second chapter of Acts. <laughs> the Holy Spirit is eter as eternal as Jesus is. The Holy Spirit is as eternal as God the Father. I believe the Holy Spirit told, told Solomon, this is what you should ask for. We need to be open to the Holy Spirit. Before we, can, before we can ask of anything, before we can even know if it's God's will, we need to allow the Holy Spirit. We need to pray with an open mind. We need to pray with an open heart. We need to pray in a way that we allow the Holy Spirit to tell us what we need to ask for. You know, Bartimaeus, first thing he had to do was come to Jesus. He had to cry out to Jesus. You know, if he had just sat over there and he had stayed at his position and he had stayed alongside the road, Jesus didn't come over to him. He heard about Jesus. He knew who Jesus was. And I believe the Holy Spirit was drawing him to, to call out to Jesus. But if Bartimaeus had said, no, I'm not going to bother. I don't really believe that he can heal me. Jesus would have walked right on by. We have people today we have people in the world around us that need Jesus they need to cry out to Jesus they need to come to Jesus they're sitting along the roadside because they don't know they don't have the faith that Jesus will do anything for them the Holy Spirit may be drawing you to call out to Jesus to cry out to Jesus and then he's asking, what do you want? I remember years and years ago when I started in youth ministry. I volunteered and I worked at several different youth conferences and youth events. And I would, I would volunteer to be a counselor. And we would have, a, we would have an invitation, a big invitation. And we, one of the events, we had over 2,000 kids there. And we had a big invitation. And there was over 100 kids on the altar. And the invitation was for salvation. But you know what they told us? They said, as you're counseling these kids, don't assume that they came for salvation. The first thing you ask them is, why did you come forward? That's what Jesus asked. Why? Why? They took the first step to come forward, but we had to ask the question, why did you come forward? This morning, as Jesus asked, what do you want? First thing you have to do is call out to him. First thing you have to do is call out. And you know what? He, when, he, when you called out, he didn't, like the disciples, the people may tell you, leave him alone. But Jesus said, come to me. Come to me. And what do you want? Call out to Jesus. Whatever your desires are, whatever your needs are, allow the Holy Spirit to guide you and ask in Jesus' name. He wants, he wants to heal. He wants to bless. He wants to be a part of our lives. But his question is, is what do you really want? This morning as we, as Matthew comes, as musicians come, before you ask him, identify within yourself. What do you really want? Lord, we thank you this morning for your blessings. Lord, we, we know that you 
work in our lives. We know that you have a desire to bless us. Lord, help us to recognize what we need. Help us, Lord, to be in tune with your will. Help us, Lord, to listen to your Holy Spirit as we come to you in prayer. In your name we pray. Amen.